eight feet. Uh, it's gonna be a good day. So, it, I, I kind of just. Hey guys, I want to do a quick update. Tell you where I was at. You sorry about the. Sorry about the light. It's pretty crazy how bright it is. So, anyways, so. what's going on, YouTube? It is Saturday, and I upped my camera game. I got rid of the GoPro, and the reason for that is when I was doing the editing, I noticed there were a lot of speckles on the on the glass on the lens, and it turned out that from grinding and doing different things around that camera, the lens is pitted. And unfortunately, there was just nothing I could do. No matter what I did, you could see the little speckles in the in the glass on the lens. So I decided to just put that to the side. So for right now, what I'm working on is my wing nuts for the valve covers. So Oldsmobile, early Oldsmobile valve covers have the center bolts, two center bolts. You can see the size of this versus this. I just drilled this one out. And... Figured out what the thread is. So what I ended up doing was I got the tap that I need, which I had in an old kit, and figured out what I needed for a drill bit, which was one size lower. And I'm gonna get these drilled out now on my drill press, and then tap them, and I'll get these valve covers mounted onto the motor, just so nothing gets down inside the valve covers. And uh, yeah, that'll just be a nice little thing that I'm gonna get done before I get back to work on on the motor so let's do that I got three left so now I'm over at my vise so these ought to tap out pretty easily it's a 5 16 by 24 thread and it's aluminum so like I said this thing should cut through this aluminum pretty easily think that drill bit I used may have been one size too big. I don't have the valve cover gaskets in at the moment. There we go. I know it'll snug down nice and tight now so as soon as I put the gaskets in I'll be able to seal those up good. Alright, three more to do. Should go pretty quick. I think these are old uh, Cal Custom valve cover wing nuts. Like I said, they're a little different than the other ones I have. But worst case, if I had to just find another set, I'm sure, I, I'm sure I could find something similar. I may not find the exact ones that these are, but I'm sure I could find something that would look, look the part, you know? Almost threading in too easy. So I feel like I may have used one drill bit size too big. I did not use a 516 drill bit. The threads are 516-24. I think I used like a 1964 or something like that drill bit. Or... But it's got a good amount of thread in it. It's just I think it could have been. I think I could have warranted using a one size smaller on the drill bit. But they're threading on with no problem. I just hope in the future they don't strip. I don't think they will, but I'll make sure that I'm careful. Like I said, I just wanted something to hold these valve covers on for the time being while the motor's in mock-up stages. All right, well, I'm gonna do the other two now.
Alright. Quick little project wrapped up. Nice. Alright. And yeah. I'm using a, a carbide deburring bit in my drill. clamp the fan very hard because I don't want to bend the blades. Alright, I want to see how that lines up with the fan. I mean, I'm sorry. I want to see how that lines up with the pulley. Looks like I gotta go just a touch more. Yeah, about the same amount on every one, so. You can kinda see the marker on each one. So I gotta go a little bit more and then uh, hopefully I can get this mounted. Should do it. I'm thinking that that should be enough. Yeah, two of them are good, and these two I just have to open up a little bit here and then a little bit here for the mark. Exactly where I marked it. <laughs> I don't want to cut it, but if I want to run this fan blade, I I absolutely have to cut it. I'm gonna to try to be as careful as I can be. I'm gonna cut it down an inch and a quarter in the total length. Hold on. So as of as of right now, this fan blade's 18 inches. The fan blade that was on the car is 15 inches. But if you look at this fan blade, you can see you can see these welds. These this this fan blade was taken apart and welded most likely by Brad because Brad cuts everything and no welds on the front but there's definitely welds on the back the rivets you can see the rivets are gone where there were four rivets see the rivet heads and there's none on the back so this this fan blade had been taken apart and modified it looks as though it had been cut uh, it doesn't look like this was a factory shape or even maybe the size I don't know uh, so this fan blade, the chrome fan blade, which I want to use, is 18 inches. And I'm going to knock it down an inch and a quarter on each end, which is two and a half. So it'll end up being 15 and a half inches. So it'll be a little bit larger than the one that was on the motor. I already marked, took my square, made my marks. And then what I did, I don't want to just cut this and leave sharp edges. I want to try to recreate. I don't want to just cut it and leave square edges. I want to recreate the profile of the fan blade. So what I did was I just laid it on a piece of paper, traced it out, and then cut it. So it's the same shape as the fan blade, as you can see. So what I'll do is I'll just slide it down an inch and a quarter, and then be able to mark exactly where I want to cut. So I'm going to do that now. So what I think I'm going to do is mask off the blade itself on the fan and just get some silver paint and just touch up the edges where I cut. Um, they don't want it to rust and like I said I really don't want to cut the chrome however I can't run this fan blade the way it is. And that's hot rotting. That's just the, the good part about building a hot rod is you can kind of 
you don't always have to follow the rules. I mean, if you think about it, how I look at it is, what would they have done back in the day building this car? And they had a fan blade that was 18 inches and it needed to be cut down to 15 and a half. Maybe they would have gone to the junkyard and found a 15 and a half inch fan, because I'm sure there's plenty of them, I think, or a 15 inch fan. I think that's a pretty standard size. But if I had to put money on it, I'd almost bet they just get out the grinder or hacksaw or whatever it was that they had at their disposal and they would have just cut it. So I'm going to gonna go with that mindset. I'm going to go with the mindset that if back in the day they ran into this issue, they would have just cut it. So I'm going to cut it. so those are cut I'm gonna get a little fine sanding disc disc on my little sander and uh, get these ends cleaned up all right I'm just gonna hit this real quick I got a 180 disc in this nothing I don't want anything too aggressive I just gently clean these edges I don't want to mess up the chrome if I can help it been in the garage much so it's nice to come out and get a quick little project like this done off my plate I'm happy with that I'm just gonna like I said I'm gonna hit these back edges real quick a couple little burrs here and there on them Like, as I was saying, it's just nice to come out and get a little project taken care of. And, you know, it's something that I needed to do in order to move forwards. So, as you can see, it's a quarter of an inch longer on each end than this fan blade that was on there. I think the odds of the motor ever running with this fan blade on it probably weren't that good. I think this is just something that Brad made me put on there and modified to make it work with the setup he was trying to run uh, but I think now that this blade's been modified I think this is going to work it should fit the way I need it to fit underneath the radiator I am going to have to have the radiator modified so I'm going to end up having to send that out which it needed to be record anyways so to get the cord done and I just have to have the guy modify the the tanks and the outlets the water outlets 
They actually need to be reversed. I need the top, the top outlet. It's been modified at some point. This radiator that I have was modified to run probably a small block Chevy, I would imagine. Um, the port needs to be taken from the driver's side, top tank, moved to the passenger side, and the lower tank needs it opposite. So it's on the passenger side now. It needs to be moved over to the driver's side. Unfortunately, that, that alone is going to be an expensive part of the puzzle. When you're building these cars, nothing's ever cheap. So I'm going to get this mounted back up on the motor, and then I may end up I may end up setting the setting the radiator and grill shell back on to see where I'm at with my clearances. And obviously, you risk when you cut down a fan blade or a fan, you risk not being able to move enough air. So without mounting the hood sides, I know that I don't know if this is exactly where the grill needs to be because what I've been doing, how I've been setting up the grill shell is I've been mounting the hood sides, getting the body line correct, and then adjusting the height of the grill shell where it needs to be. This is close. It may actually need to come up a little bit. I think it does um, but this just just for the sake of getting the position and seeing testing the height of the fan blade this allows me to at least clear the bottom of the tank it's a little difficult to see let me see if I can I'll lift the tank up and show you I'll tilt it forwards see this recess here where the fan blade is supposed to go so I can actually space that fan blade with a spacer forwards closer to the radiator itself to clear to fit in here uh, more or less where it's going to be positioned uh, this radiator unfortunately does need quite a bit of work I'm mounting it here and it's actually the lower tube is actually sitting on top of the axle they got to raise the lower tube on this to clear between the axle and and the uh, front spring. Fortunately though now with knowing that the motor is on the spring, the weights on the spring minus a few things added to the motor which is probably 150 pounds, you know you get your starter, uh, your generator, intake carbs, things like that so um, including the weight of the radiator it'll settle the nose down a little more uh, and then I can kind of get an idea of where exactly it is I'm going to need that lower hose, that tube to come out. That's how they did it back in the day, and I'm going to just recreate what they did, you know, 60 years ago, more than that, 70 years ago. Uh, so yeah, so a lot of big things happening, a lot of things, good stuff happening with the car. So, all right, guys, I'm going to get to work on the, uh, I'm going to get to work on the wishbone mounts. I'm gonna work on my wishbone mount. Actually, I'll grab the mount and show you. They're nice and heavy. So this is the mount that I actually removed from the car when I took it apart. You can see it was only welded on the front side. This was the the pass. This was the side that was on the inside. Yeah, yeah, the outside. It was just basically tacked on the outside of the frame rail. It's spent most of its life in mock-up stage. So these are the mounts. They're at least quarter of an inch. I think they're quarter inch. I think they're thicker than quarter of an inch. So they're just shy of three. They're three eighths. These are three eighths inch mounts. I don't know what they came off of, but they are super, super heavy duty. So that's why I said I was going to reuse these. So get these cleaned up, mounted on the chassis, back all them in place. I can get my caster. As soon as my caster's good. I'm gonna go to, then I'm gonna work on my transmission.
see if I can get it cleaned up a little bit better around where the bung is in this old weld. This looks like it was a piece of angle iron at one point. You see, because it has this area in the middle. Uh, yeah, I'm going to see if I can get a little bit of the rust cleaned off the rest of it and then kind of call it. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this area underneath the frame, right at the bottom of the cowl, all sanded down, cleaned up. I threw a flap disc, 60 grit flap disc on my grinder, and basically, unfortunately you really can't see where I'm going to be working, but I'm going to be working right underneath where this is going to mount to. which is up underneath the frame rail here. So it's going to be a little tough to see, but I'm going to be doing that, cleaning that up. I'm going to get that all set. I'm going to pull some measurements, see where my axle is sitting at the moment, make sure that the axle is square, and then uh, maybe throw a few tacks on it and then go on the other side and do the same thing over there. Alright, so I got underneath the frame all sanded yeah. down. Why did that shut off? There's no way this is dead. I... This thing has been plugged in. Ugh. I hate stuff that's junk. Nothing beats a light with a plug on the back of it, I'll tell you that much. What I gotta do is get some measurements, figure out where my axle is sitting in relation to the frame, make sure it's square, and then throw some tacks in in these wishbone mounts, and then work on the next thing, whatever that's going to be. Kind of all over the place right the axles, now. The I axle think, is... I think it was recording the whole time. No, it wasn't. It was off. Second, you shut the thing, it's off. Oh. I have the axle perpendicular. That means it's opposite, 90 degrees. I have the axle right now square to the chassis. And what I did was I measured from my kingpin, which is here. I measured from this outside, this back edge of the kingpin to the center of this hole right there. So from that hole to the back side of my kingpin is 30 and like an eighth, a 30 and a 16th. So they're even now, both sides. What's the king, kingpin that? No, nope, that's a steering wheel. Kingpin is this pin. Oh, yeah. That's what the whole wheel turns on. Yeah. So thanks everyone for tuning in, hanging out, coming along this journey of mine uh, I'm working with new editing software also I'm learning it 
it's a professional based software there's a lot that goes into this new software so um, if you're seeing this video and it's later or there's been a longer gap in between videos than usual that's why because of the learning curve on this on this editing software it's like I said it's pretty in-depth um, they'll get better as I go you know like everything it's just the more you do something the better you get so so I'm learning with everything this new it's done clean up the shop cut this last piece and then I'm off I'm in the house, so guys have a good night I don't know where my phone went. Oh, right there. <laughs>